I got to say, New Amsterdam Radio is brought to you by Anchor FM. Have you ever thought about making your own podcast? You see, when I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? And most importantly, I don't want to deal with cables and wires and all those things. You see, the answer to every single one of these questions is pretty simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And you can use your phone, which is pretty awesome. Now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. So if you ever wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. New Amsterdam Radio is, of course, brought to you apart by newamsterdam.com, home of the notebook one. Whether you use it as a dream journal or a way to get things done, the Notebook One is a reimagined notebook with creative people in mind, supreme construction, excellent durability. You can get yours with this promo code RADIO, R A D I O, RADIO at newamsterdam.com. Welcome, citizen. How's everyone out there in the podcast land? Of course. This is Flopo Boys, uh, co-founder of NewAmsterdam.com and the host of New Amsterdam Radio, a way where we take a look at creative trends and people of interest and how they are advancing each one of their genres or segments or tech sectors or sectors in general. It doesn't have to be tech, but you get the idea. Uh, I want to thank you all so much for making this show a part of your routines, um, wherever podcasts are streamed. I think a lot of our streamers, our listeners are coming from Spotify, so welcome. Uh, of course, we want to do more and more episodes as this thing keeps growing and growing and growing. And make sure you tell your friends and your family and even your enemies about the show over at New Amsterdam Radio. Today, I want to talk to you about hip hop. What? I know it's a very, very big genre to cover, but I want to drill it down into something that I think we can pull from today, and that is the evolution of the genre. Um, I'm of a certain age. I grew up in the 90s, the 1990s. Some can say that's even the golden age of hip-hop, right? So we had just passed the the disco-influence era of the genre, the, you know, the hip-hop, the hip 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 hop right? And now we're getting to more of a lyrical base, right? This is also the rise of what's known as gangster hip-hop. And that was really when uh, hip-hop was in the forefront as, as one of the quote-unquote villains of our society for those who didn't understand the genre. The late 80s into early 90s was really that, that time period. I was around to see hip-hop evolve uh, from being the quote-unquote CNN of the hood um, more of complex stories of what happens in the world of, of tight neighborhoods and uh, dashed aspirations and crime and drugs and being able to be in defense mode or survival mode, wherever, wherever which phrase you may prefer. And towards the late 90s, I think mainstream radio got a hold of the genre and tried to make it more commercial. Not to its detriment, but definitely there was more of an appreciation of we're going out to party, uh, here I am dancing in the club. Uh, and that still had a very lyrical base. I mean, there were still uh, rappers doing their 8 or 16 bars or um, rhymes, right, per, per verse, and, and had having a more um, R&B-influenced hook or chorus. So through the 90s, we saw on one side it was very, very lyrical, but towards the end of the 90s, we're seeing more of that lyrical bass, but mixed with some more of the musical elements of it all. And that was great. I think when people look back fondly to, to hip-hop now, they're not re- thinking about like the Lords of the Underground, which were one of my favorite groups growing up. They're thinking more of like 50 Cent's first album, right? The, the Wangsta, the In the Club, which was totally the late 90s, early 2000s take on the genre. I think there's a bit of a balance there as far as the storytelling aspect of the genre and it being able to be danceable, uh, to, to be in the clubs, it to be uh, approachable by the mainstream. Fast forward today, um, and we see hip-hop 
and rap has evolved even further. Now, I'm going to use a term that people use to describe most modern hip-hop, and I, I'm going to tell you in a minute that it's not quite an accurate assessment, but mumble rap, right? So um, even though there is some rhyming happening in most forms of modern hip-hop music, uh, it definitely seems to be more melodic, using the, the sounds of the mouth as more of an instrument uh, rather than uh, the lyrics, right? Um, a lot of the beats have been simplified based on 90s standards, uh, but definitely there is a, a groove to it very similar to its predecessor in hip-hop. The term mumble rap is almost almost used derisively, uh, pejoratively, uh, in a bad way, in other words. Uh, oh man, I, it's always a, in the phrase of, oh man, I can't stand mumble rap. So uh, for this, I want to say, let's call it melodic rap, just to understand that I'm appreciating it as what it is now versus what, what it was before. And even though I use that, a reference as a timeline, has the evolution of the genre, I think we can purely call it a split. I think that we can really say that there is a branch of the genre that somehow is more popular into the forefront, but that doesn't mean one has dissipated. And then actually the crux of this episode came by uh, one of the newer uh, hits right now, it's October 2018, um, the song Big Bank. Uh, the song Big Bank, which I can't play for you here for copyright reasons, but you can check it out on Spotify, uh, YG, 2 Chains, uh, Big Sean, uh, we're on this, Nicki Minaj are on this track. And it has a very, very uh, blending of elements from the modern era, like the beat's very, very simplified, um, and it's kind of uh, juvenile in the best way possible. But the lyrics themselves are very lyrical based. They are talking about, yes, advancing your socioeconomic status, buy your money, um, but definitely there are nuggets of wisdom within it. And I thought it was so fascinating, especially uh, Big Sean's verse, uh, who makes references to Tesla, to cryptocurrency, uh, to uh, being able to bounce back from a financial hardship all within his verse. And I think that was what really was the essence of hip hop. It wasn't really being about being gangster. It wasn't really about being a boss. It wasn't really about being a womanizer. It was able to tell stories and to impart little nuggets of knowledge, right? Or we used to say growing up in Brooklyn, dropping signs. And to me, I thought, wow, for those of those old school cats who said, oh, the past is gone. This is the future. And even the people who said, I prefer the past. Um, I think it was an example of taking some things that worked from a past era and using it in the modern sensibility without... Um, it falling out of the current zeitgeist. Now, what does it have to do with creativity in general? Well, when you create something, whether or not you are an artist, a writer, a comic, uh, a comic book artist, um, we always have this propensity to, to create something new. It's usually society is going left. I'm going to try to go right. Uh, but if whenever go, you go to a formal training of an art form, let's say you go to drawing school, usually the first year, year and a half, you go and try to emulate past artists. Like you have to understand the past before you offer your thumbprint on things. And I really think that even though formal training is not necessarily the best training, that is something we can always pull from when we create things. You see, there's, there's always greatness in, in looking back and see how what you're working on has changed and how has it evolved. Also, with putting in what you think is different and missing in the genre. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, that's definitely something that would probably be a fruitless endeavor. But once you understand how the wheel works, then you can get real funky with it, right? You could add more spokes. You can add, like, not like a... A, a smooth wheel, but a many different sided wheel or whatever. That's just a really bad analogy, but you know what I'm saying. The idea is once you understand the past, you understand the future, using that and mixing those experiences can actually get you something greater, something that um, can appeal to both ways with it being authentic to yourself. I mean, you don't really have to do it just because you think this is what people are into. You don't have to go into the music studio and go, well, I guess I got to make a club song because club songs are hot right now. You know? But if you understand, hey, what elements do people love about club music? Uh, being uplifted and not having a care in the world mixed with what you can offer. Well, I'm um, this sensibility or that sensibility. The result can be something really, really great.
And that's all the time we have today on this edition of New Amsterdam Radio. Please tell a friend about the podcast and please visit us over at newamsterdam.com. You know, my name is Hobo Boyce and I love doing these. Uh, if you want to hear something specific, want me to go deep down into a topic that really, really interests you, follow me over at my website at flobito.com. That's F-L-L-B-I-T-O.com. I'll be there. I'll be waiting for you. And until next time, catch you later.